Scout versus Tracer. The poster child of Overwatch versus the child of TF2. Yo, what's up? Or British versus Murica. Actually, let's not go there. You'll only bring up the thing with the T and the boat. And quite frankly, I still haven't quite gotten over that. It's, it's quite upsetting. In these epic stat battles of history, I compare the damage and abilities of characters from two of our favorite class-based FPS games. And in this episode, we're gonna find out who does more damage out of these two sexy beasts. This was the most suggested episode by you guys, presumably because of their very similar playstyles within the games. Their playstyles are so alike, in fact, that I challenge you to guess which character each of these lines from the wiki are for. A close range skirmishing hero specialising in speed and single target damage, an ideal class for aggressive fighting and flanking and a great class for quick hit and run tactics that can either sap away enemies health or kill them outright due to their ability to get in, do damage and dash away before even being noticed. I know, it literally says the word dash, but that was from the wiki for the scout. Two glass cannons with unique mobility mechanics and powerful close range weapons. So who murders people better? Let's find out. Now of course, a single unit of health will not necessarily have the same value in each game. So how do we compare their stats and their damage numbers? We have to use a conversion ratio, which we'll have to determine ourselves. There are many ways to arrive at one of these, for example using the average health pool, the mean, the most commonly occurring HP for a hero or class, the mode, or the HP that sits in the middle of the range. Nothing is perfect, but for this series we tend to use the mean or the average HP. So we add the health of every single class in TF2 together and and divide by 9, which is the total number of classes, which gives us this number. And then we do the same with Overwatch, which takes a little bit longer and is slightly more painful, but which gives us this number. We then divide both sides by the smallest of the two numbers, and hey presto, we have our ratio, which in this case is 1 to 1.7. So I will be calculating the average DPS over a minute period, taking into account weapon reload time and shot intervals. I will be starting with the maximum DPS, assuming every shot hits the target at point blank range so you know just the sort of damage I would tend to do normally if I was playing either of these characters and bear in mind this will include a times two headshot multiplier in Overwatch. We will ignore random crits in TF2 for the initial comparison and we will focus on Scout's default primary weapon to begin with. So starting with Scout or Jeremy, a Bostonian who likes caffeine, just throwing in some trivia there you're welcome. His scattergun has six shots, each shot has ten pellets, each pellet does six damage so that means 60 damage but because of how damage fall off and ramp up works in TF2, if close enough to a target, the scout can do up to 150 damage, which means a total of 90 damage. Wait. Nope. The scout can do 105 damage with a meat shot. After looking into this, I found out that this was because the scattergun has the unique attribute of a 175% damage ramp up. I genuinely never knew this, and that's why I love doing these episodes. I always learn some random interesting fact about one of the two games. I guess this is a mechanic that was put in to try and reward and encourage the scouts to get as close as humanly possible when dealing damage. Anyway, so let's work with 105 damage. We also know he has a 0.625 second attack interval, a reload time of 0.7 seconds for the first reload, and 0.5 seconds for each consecutive reload. So to work out the average DPS, I first work out the time it takes to shoot an entire clip and reload again. So in this case we know that Scout does 630 damage in 6.325 seconds. Then all you need to do is divide 630 by 6.325 and you get 99.6 DPS. Woo! Not too bad. Almost a nice tidy round 100. Moving over to Tracer now, or Lena Oxton, who is 26 from Britlandshire and she's a lesbian. Not really relevant, I know, but I'm just saying because it's in the wiki, it's a fact, so I'm just... She also supports Chelsea. Tracer's pulse pistols do 3.6 to 12 damage per shot. That's 1.8 to 6 damage per bullet, as she's shooting two at a time because she has two pulse pistols. There are 20 bullets in each magazine and they shoot 20 shots per second. So, firing one set of magazines will 
will do up to 240 damage in one second. Times this by two for the headshot bonus and you have 480 damage. Add the reload time, which is 1.15 seconds. By the way, if you constantly fired as Tracy, you'd be reloading more than firing. Feels bad, man. And this brings us to 480 damage every 2.15 seconds. Then all we have to do is divide 480 by 2.15 and we get 223.26 DPS. But then we finally have to convert this to the TF2 HP currency by dividing it by 1.7 and we arrive at 131.3269 nice 4938440. 131 DPS. So what do we end up with? This means Tracer potentially has a slightly higher sustained DPS than Scout. Poor, poor Jeremy. But hold your horses. This becomes even more interesting when you start to think about the other stats and abilities these two characters have. And in particular, when you start to think about the effective range of these two characters. So I wanted to also compare the health, speed, effective range, and other abilities of these two characters to see how they match up. For all speed measurements, I use this conversion rate from hammer units into meters. And so looking at Scout again, he has 125 health. His speed is 133%. Uh, um, which is apparently 17.1 miles per hour, which I decided to double check because I have no idea what's real anymore after finding out about that crazy damage ramp up. So I found that the base speed in TF2 is 300 hammer units per second. The scout travels at 133% of 300, which is 399 hammer units per second. Convert this to centimeters by multiplying by 1.904 and we get a big juicy number like this, which indeed converts to about 17 miles per hour. So good, it was right. Okay, finally, what about the effective range? Well, this is where things get really interesting and a little bit more subjective. But for this, I've considered the range at which the scattergun does 100% damage or more. So in TF2 for the scattergun that's 512 hammer units away which is 9.748 meters. But hold your horses again. That just takes into account damage fall off. What about weapon spread? F my life. Well on the Overwatch wiki it simply says that Tracer has a spread angle of 3.6 degrees which makes a lot of sense to me. And so okay we take a look at the TF2 wiki. What have you got for me? 30 to 1. What? Again, didn't really know what that meant to begin with, but after a bit of research I learned that this means that every 30 hammer units away you are from the target, the spread becomes one hammer unit in size, in width. So, using lots more maths, which I won't go into for this episode because it gets a little bit too in-depth, we can work out the angle so we can do a better comparison to Overwatch. And I'm pretty sure this is the first ever time I've used trigonometry since leaving school, by the way. So, you'll just have to trust me, or of course correct me if you think I've gone wrong, but we end up with 1.9 degrees. And just a reminder, Tracer's was 3.6 degrees, so quite a significant difference. So let's take a look at the other abilities and stats for Tracer. Her health, when converted to TF2 hit points, is 88. Her speed is 6 meters per second. Interestingly, every hero's movement speed in Overwatch is 5.5 meters per second, with the exception of Genji and Tracer, who both move at 6 meters per second. And so what about Tracer's range? Well, the damage falloff starts at 13 meters. This is where the damage starts to reduce linearly until 23 meters. So using the same rule, we can use 13 for the point at which Tracer starts to do less than 100% damage for every shot that hits. But again, as we start to look at the damage falloff and weapon spread to Together, we start to get a much better picture of the effective range of the two characters. And it feels to me that Scout has a more generous effective range, largely because of his smaller weapon spread, but also partly due to the fact that the damage fall off in Overwatch is just more severe. And I don't know about you, but I certainly feel like at mid-range, you can sort of chip away quite nicely at the enemy with the scattergun, whereas if you're playing Tracer, you're rendered practically useless unless you are literally rubbing yourself against the enemy's face. So let's review. Scout is tougher, but Tracer has more sustained FPS potential. Scout is faster generally, and Scout has better range overall when considering the fall off and spread. And by the way, a slight change in the spread angle can have a huge effect because how triangles work and stuff. I don't know what I'm talking about. Do you know what I mean though? If the angle starts a tiny bit bigger, by the time you get 10 meters away, that can have a huge effect on the actual spread. Anyway, and finally, I don't want to sound prejudiced, but I think teleporting through space and time is a slightly stronger ability than being able to do a little bonus jump mid-air. 
Oh yeah, and Scout Sexy or what? For the sake of my sanity and the length of this video, I had to put aside some of the other factors that come into account, such as weapon switching in TF2. By whipping out a pistol, the Scout can pump out a bunch more damage without having to reload. 180 damage, in fact, if each of the 12 shots land and do the maximum of 15 damage. And because the pistol shoots 60 rounds a second, that means you can do 90 DPS for an extra two seconds. But I would have to add in the weapon switch time as well. I'd have to do some calculations there. If we were considering other weapons, do we consider Tracer's Pulse Bomb as well, which deals up to 355 damage? What about including that sneaky melee hit that skilled Tracers will always include as a combo when attacking the enemy? Melee damage for the Scout is 35, and in Overwatch there's interestingly a universal melee damage of 30, except for Ryan and Torb, and this universal damage number is about 18 equivalent TF2 hit points, so pretty measly compared to TF2 standards. Oh yeah, and one other thing, what about crits? Well in that case, TF2 wins everything. So, who does more damage? Who wins this face-off between Jeremy and Lena? That's not the point, is it? It's about the fun we had and the friends we made along the way. But also technically Tracer kind of wins. Well, just the damage question at least. But both very good video game characters and great video games would recommend. I hope you enjoyed this video guys, these are always good fun to make and I always learn some fascinating little nuggets of information about how these games work when making these videos. For example, the unique damage ramp up for the scattergun and how damage spread works in the two games and how crazy the damage spread is for Tracer's pulse pistols and the fact that that is probably the main reason she does such a pitiful amount of damage at any range. I've had comments in the past about how people have enjoyed seeing me work things out so that's why I keep a lot of that stuff in here but as always let me know if I've missed anything or made any errors I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching guys and let me know in the comments who should we compare next.